So our first topic is going to be about catching and the horse that we're going to use throughout these next couple of uh, situations. It's a young horse that, you know, she's got limited handling and the reason we chose her because she might be, you know, less advanced as the horse that you adopt or more advanced for the horse that you adopt. And we want to choose her so she could be somewhere in the middle uh, so she can show you some of the strategies I might use if things just don't go perfectly. Uh, but mainly I want to go in here and help her learn how to catch me, take interest in me instead of ignoring me and running away. So, so as I approach her, I'm going to, she's sitting here in this corral. I've just got a halter and a lead rope as my tools. Now, what I've gotten here as well, you know, she's sitting here eating. You know, if she chooses to leave, that's okay. I don't want to come up and surprise the horse, so what I try to do with any horse, I try to establish maybe a signal or something. I'll have a whistle, like something like that to let that horse know that I'm coming in. Now she's got her nose buried in a feed trough, so I could walk her over to the feed trough and help her out. But I'm going to look for a little bit more engagement from her. So. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to cause her to take interest in me. And usually what I do when I try to feel out a horse, I try to go towards her tail. And as I go towards her tail, sometimes I draw a little bit of interest. So she's taking some interest in this hay. I'm not trying to push her away. I'm just trying to cause the hay a little less desirable than me. So I walked right in there behind her tail and she decided to turn and face. Now, yes, I'm close to the hay. I'm sitting here right where... <laughs> the hay might be, but I want this to be less about the food orientation and more about this horse taking some interest in me. So usually when I go back around that tail and a horse shows me that they might leave, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on them. So you saw me tapping my leg. She's walked by me, so I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on her because she kind of snuck by me. She just had her left eye on me and see I've got her ear. She's got a nice cadence. She's staying at the trot. I don't necessarily want her just to make a little pit, like a little pit stop there <laughs> at the food. And see, because I interrupted her, she brought up a behavior of, eh, I'm, I'm not too interested in that. I was going in there to eat. Just because I come in here, I'm not looking to disrupt her feeding pattern, but I just want this to be more about her taking an interest in me. But I'm going to stay centered. I'm going to stay in this situation so that I can be close enough to cause the hay to be undesirable. So as she leaves, I'm not going to be too strong on her. You know, I let her try to figure out a couple turns. She changed from her left eye to her right eye. This is the first time she's been able to look at me with two eyes. So I just hang out. If I were to approach a horse, I'm going to try to approach her right from the middle of her nose. So however she might be looking at me, if she is looking at me with two eyes, I'm going to try to position myself directly in the middle. By putting myself directly in the middle, this horse is going to showcase which side they prefer me on. So as I go up here and I approach her, see how she's looking towards the camera? Now, I don't know if she prefers me on the left, on the right, excuse me, but she decided to leave. So I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on her. I don't need her to be running around here. I'm just going to say, because you left, I'm just going to keep a little bit of pressure on you. The moment she takes a little more interest in me, meaning she puts maybe two eyes on me like that, I'll leave her alone. So that whole time she had one eye on me. And this time around it was her right eye. So now I've got her attention, I've got her ears, I've got her eyes, so I'm just hanging out. I could even walk away for a little bit. I could just look and pretend I'm looking for a rock of some sort and you can see how that might draw her attention. But I don't know if her attention is directly on me or more interested in the hay. So because she approached about 15 feet, I'm going to get back to walking down the middle of her eyes. I'll let her smell of me. And I want her to engage to where there she made contact with me. I'll rub her right down the middle of her face. I've got my leader up and my halter set up so that when I do approach her, I'm in a situation of being prepared. I just want to rub on her here for a little bit if she tries to leave. I'm not going to try to keep her here. She's entitled to leave, but I just want to rub on her. And for right now, I mean, I'm going to stay on this left side so that I can... It, it wouldn't hurt if I walked over here to the right side, but see how she's tipping her nose? I want to be aware of that. So just because I'm over here on this right side doesn't mean that she's not going to 
leave. So I, I just want to be aware of all those situations. So rubbing her down. I don't necessarily need to go past the withers for right now. Because she showed the tendency of leaving, she's pretty much, she has caught me at her level. So I'm going to put my lead rope over. And what I try to do is I try to slide that over to where I can hold on to it. Now this is, you know, I, I want to help this horse stay with me. So I put the lead rope over in case this horse got scared or got worried and had to get away, I could just let go. But having that lead rope over is just going to give me an extra amount of control. Now I've got my halter ready in a position that I can help make it a little more easier to get the halter on. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use my right thumb or my index and my middle finger to tip her nose towards me. And if she can tip her nose towards me, I'll leave her alone. Now I'm going to try my thumb and I just want to get to where she can bend that at a 90 degree. I'll release every chance she offers it really nice. So there's another good try. There I'm rubbing her on the right side. So now I'm going to reach underneath and I'm going to grab my halter. So now what I try to do is I try to tip her head in a way, just like my thumb or my index finger was, and I just tip her nose right into it. As I tie the halter, I sure enough would like for her to have an element of lateral flexion. And what lateral flexion is, is what I was trying to do with my fingers. Trying to bend her over, and I'll show you from this perspective. I, I just put my thumb right behind this jaw, or put my index and my middle finger, just to help her tip her nose right on over. So I'm going to go ahead and tie the halter. So with this halter knot, I want you to be sure that it's tied properly. And what I mean by tied properly, this is what it looks like at the end. And what this is, this has a series of three bites. So if this horse were to step on the lead rope, if this horse were to set back, or for any reason this knot were to get really, 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 really tight, all you'd have to do is just push up and that would loosen the halter to come undone. What I see often is people tying the halter above, this is called the eye, this is called the tail, they tie it above like this and it makes that kind of a knot. And the reason that's not a very safe or secure knot, because as the horse goes along, you know, that could come undone. As the horse is trotting, you can see how much, how much uh, bigger the halter got, that halter could come off. Or, the worst case scenario is if the horse were to do what I said about setting back or stepping on the lead rope and that knot right there gets so tight, you won't be able to get it off. You'll have to cut the knot because there's no, there are no bites. It'll bind on itself. So I want you to be sure that when you tie this halter, it's high enough. It's halfway between their eye and their nostril. It's snug behind their cheekbone. Because I don't want it to sag like this, because again, it'll, it'll press on the horse's nasal cavity and it could fall off and get in their mouth. So I'm always testing to see how tight I can get it. I'm going to make it snug. And how I tie this is I take the tail, I take all the slack out. I'm, I'm right with my right hand. With my left hand, I hold with my index finger and I pinch with my left thumb. And the tail is colored in yellow. I'm going to go behind along the horse's skin and right back through. Okay, so I use my middle finger to redirect the tail. I don't want to be confusing, but some people can even tie this like that, and when they go to tighten it, they flip it above. So once again, you've tied the knot incorrectly. So make sure when you go to tighten this knot, you pull on the tail, okay? So that this knot looks just like that. The tail. Now, I, I want you to know the situations that we help this filly through, uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg of situations that will arise in your horsemanship. You know, using this filly, we tried to get one that was a little less uh, understanding, you know, a lot less handling on her. Uh, just to give you a, a basis of some strategies that you can utilize on the horse that you have now. I know there's thousands of other opportunities that you'll run into with your horse and if you run into problems and if there's any way that we can be, in a, be of assistance, we'll be more than happy to help you out. Because I want you to know nine times out of ten when the horse runs into a lot of trouble, it's usually not the horse's fault. That horse is looking back on us saying, why, how, what is it that you're really wanting me to do? And that's where I've tried to make it my life goal to help people understand that so that they can help horses 
ask those questions less. So that my horse knows the reasons why we're doing things and that we're building the comfort and the safety and the desire for them to want to be with us. So again, congratulations, and I want to thank you for giving this horse another opportunity.